I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rhema Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rhema Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. We're glad you're with us today. And you know, uh, I'm talking about today on the program, don't give up on the promises of God. Now, some people, hun, when they, 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 they talk about the promises of God until push comes to shove or, right. and they find themselves in a situation and they, they begin to waver on the promises of God. You know, so, honey, somebody will come and say, well, see, you, you're not going to, your faith not going to get you through this time. You know, I, first of all, they need to read the word of God. Right. You need to read the word of God to see what the promises are. Yeah. And then whatever your situation is, you need to find a promise. Right. That applies to that. Like if you need a financial is if it's a financial need, then you look at the promise that says, my God shall supply all of my needs, not just a part of my needs, but or, all or, of my or needs. Or if you're in a hopeless situation, seem like, you you got to you gotta go to the fact, uh, no weapon formed against me will prosper. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, you got to go to... 91st Psalm, he, he's, our, he's our protector. He, right. he, he keeps it. Our in. angels are in charge uh, of yeah, us. Yeah, he delivers yes. us yes. out of every situation, but you got to believe it and you got to right. hold on. You know, and, and, and Hebrews says, hold fast your confession, your confession of faith. That's right. So let's go right now where I'm talking about don't give up on the promises of God. You know, uh, Adam Clark says, uh, he says, we are, we are told that the hearts of all Israel went after Absalom. And that's in 2 Samuel 15, 13. David is astonished to find such a sudden and general revolt. Not only the common people, but the counselors also and many of his chief, ca chief captains. Now he finds himself in a, <laughs> this is a pretty distressful situation when your own son has Held a, had a coup and is trying to take over the throne. He was great, in great distress. He was in great trouble. It looked like he would never sit on the throne again. It seemed like that all that God had given him had been stolen from him. And it seemed like this was the end. Anybody ever found yourself in the same kind of situation? I see several people shaking their head and raising their hands. You know, where it looked like the blessings of God had all been stolen from you, where it looked like it was all over but the crying, and maybe you might be there right now. But I want you to know that God will lift your head and God will lift you out of your trouble. God is not surprised. God is never surprised on, about anything. You know, Let's read that Psalms 3, 1 and 2 again. I want to read it again. I'm going to read the NLT. Oh, Lord, I have so many enemies. So many are against me. So many are saying God will never rescue him. Now, you know, many times when you're, when you're in a situation and you're believing God. Have you ever noticed how many people will come to you and, and some people, maybe not, some people will come to you and say, uh, I know God delivered you before, but uh, it's, it, don't, it don't look like it's going to happen this time. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah. You see, he said, see, there's many, so many are saying God will never rescue him. You see, the reason the enemy brings people like that to put thoughts in your head is to get you to quit trusting God. 
I don't know if you've ever been at a trial or not, but defense attorneys are very good at, try, at, at, at saying something from the, getting the person to answer a question. And then the other attorney says, I object. The judge says, yes. And he tells the court reporter that's recording everything to strike that from the record. That attorney knows what he's doing. They're going to strike it from that record, and if you read the, if you go read the report, it won't be there. But when those jurors go in that jury room, they can't take that out of their out of their head. That's why they say it to get them to get them to doubting. That's what the enemy there. That's why see people coming around saying God will never help you. This is one time it's not going to happen. Why? To get you thinking the wrong way. And there's a book back there in that bookstore called Right and Wrong Thinking. Right thinking brings results. Wrong thinking bring, brings nothing. Brings trouble. Here, you know, sometimes it's, it seems like we're surrounded by everybody that's uh, saying it can't happen. And I tell them it can happen. You've got to be strong in the midst when everything is coming against you and saying it's not happened, it can't happen, it, it won't happen. You got to stand there and say it will happen, it will happen, it can happen, and it's going to happen. Come on now. You know, a lot of times, have you ever found, found out that, that people sometimes try to put you down so they can be lifted up. I, I've seen this many, many, many times. You know, people try to discredit you. They do that all the time. <laughs> you go read some of this junk on Facebook, on, uh, on uh, my name, and they've got all kinds of junk there. Somebody said, that bother you? No, don't bother me, because most of it's not true, and, and uh, the part that's on there, they've twisted it to make it something that it's not. So I don't care. I'm doing what God told me to do. And God's still my God, and God will take care of me. I, I'm not, I'm not going to be concerned about them because God is my source. God is my helper. I want you to realize tonight that he, you know, it, it, Sometimes people try to write us Christians off, and I don't mean this wrongly, but they try to write us off as ignorant for believing God and trusting God. Anybody ever seen that or heard that? You know, uh, they try to tell us that, that we're unqualified for anything and so forth and so on. And uh, it seems like trouble's on every hand, that, you know, on every situation. And, but I want you to know, let, let's uh, look at Psalms 2111. Psalms 2111. Go look at Psalms 2111. Now, I'll go read it from the New King James and then the New Living. For they intended evil against you, they devised a plot which they are not able to perform. Now, I like the way the NLT says it. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed, for they will turn and run when they see the arrows aimed at them. Come on now. We need to realize that although people plot against us, although the enemy brings things against us, that are evil and schemes that try to get us away from the things of God, they can't, they never will succeed if you will not give up on the promises of God. But it's, it's up to, you know, it's up to you whether the evil schemes that the enemy's bringing against you, it's up to you whether they, whether they are able to come to pass or not. Not up to God, not up to the devil. It's up to you to stand your ground 
with the word of God. You know, they used, when I was in high school and, they, you know, they used to, coaches, they would tell me, they'd say, now, Hagen, listen, you're up against the number one defensive back or you're up against the, the number one track runner today. Just do the best you can. Man, I don't tell you what, I, I, I didn't say it to them, but man, I dug my, I, you know, I dug my heels in. I said, you just hide and watch. You know, that's when the enemy comes in with all telling you everything he's going to do and what's going to happen. That's when you got to, that's when you got to dig in and just quote the word and stand on the word. It may not look like it on paper, but I'm going to tell you what, you can do it. You know, so many times when their teams are meeting against one another, they, 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 look at the, they look at the players, and they got to look at all these players, and they look at these players, and these players are more talented and so forth. And on paper, they say, hey, this team is the talented team. Do you know what? Even though they look good on paper, hey, it don't matter what happens, no matter what the paper says. It's what happens on that field that's what counts. That's, it don't matter whether somebody's supposed to be good or not. I've been up a lot against a lot of guys that were supposed to be a whole lot better than me, but when it was all said and done, I was the one in the winner's circle. No one's because I just don't believe I, I just don't believe I can be defeated and I won't, I mean, I won't quit. I had a coach tell me one time, he said, Hagen, what I like about you is, he said, you're on the other side of the field and if somebody intercepted the pass and they're going, he said, you will run as hard as you can run and you will not stop until that guy crossed the goal line. I said, no, because I might have a chance. He might stumble. He might fumble the ball. I might have a chance to get him. I said, I'm never going to quit. See, we've got to be that way with, our, with the things of God. The enemy, may, he, he may have stolen the ball from us and look like he's stolen all our blessings. Hey, keep, keep after him. Don't back up and say, oh, well, I guess it's not going to work this time. Yes, it will work if you will keep up. Oh, man, hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at, look, look at that. Now, let's go back. Let's go back there to Psalms 3, 3. Let's go back to Psalms 3, 3. Psalms 3, 3. And uh, in the King James, it says, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. But in the NLT, it says, but you, Lord, you are a, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. Shield. What is a shield? It's protection. A shield is something that you use to protect. If you go read about the armor that you're supposed to have every day, the shield of faith quenched the fiery darts of the enemy. He is our shield. It says here, he, he's a shield. You are my, you are a shield around me. If you got a shield around you, why worry? The devil can't get through. It doesn't matter what somebody says. I don't care. Somebody told me that. You know what they said about you? I said, I don't care. Don't, it can't bother me. It may bother you, but it, ain't gonna, it don't bother me. Come on now. See, we give glory to God because he's our shield. He is protecting us when we can't see it, we don't feel it, everybody else is saying it can't happen. He is the one that is our deliverer because he's our shield. He's the one who turns our hopeless situation into victory because he's our shield. He's the one that causes our enemies to run from us. There, it, it says... 
Resist the devil. James says, resist the devil and he'll run from you. Or actually the word flee is in there when that word means run as if in terror. With our shield, when, when he's our shield that is around us, he is the one that restores to us what's been stolen from us. I believe that. That's when in the middle of that, because we know the shield is around us, we give glory to God because we know that he's holding, us, he's holding our, our head up. He's holding us high. He's raising us against above the despair. He's raising you up out of depression. He's raising you up out of distress. He's raising you up out of trouble. You know, man, you know, they always tell you, hold your head high. No matter what happens, hold your head up. You know, you can tell when somebody defeated. I mean, we used to, on the other, on, we was on the sideline, we'd say, hey, look, look, look how they're walking off the field after something had happened. I mean, we look at one another and say, hey, we got this. The score, we, might be, we might be behind on the scoreboard, but if they're walking off the field like with their head down, right, I can tell you right now, they say, uh-oh, it's all over. And if, any of you guys know what I'm talking about? Some of you guys should know what I'm talking about. How many of you have ever seen the other team go, walk into the huddle or walk into the side with their head down? Did that inspire you or not? Yeah, because you know, hey, <laughs> hey, we got this. Listen, let me tell you why. God's holding our head up. Telling, hey, you got this. <laughs> you know, with our head lifted up, we can give glory to God. You know, with our head lifted up, it bring, God brings us encouragement, telling you it's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. You know, when he lifts our head up, he gives us the comfort of all of his promises. When he lifts our head up, he, 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 he builds in us with the word of God that we are overcomers. We can't go over. I mean, we can't go under for going over. Amen. When he lifts our head up, something happens. What happens? When he lifts us up, lifts our head up, our perspective changes, and we're able to see the possibility instead of the problem. Excuse me. When, he, when our heads are lifted up, our thoughts change. Our thinking change. We begin to think about what God said instead of what's going on and what everybody else is saying and what this is happening and that's happening. Hey, with our head, him holding our head up, lifting our head, it says here, you, who holds my head high. Hey, all of a sudden, our expectancy changes. We begin to believe that it can happen even though the current circumstances say us it can't happen. Yeah, our God is a mighty God and he'll lift us up. He'll lift us out of our troubles. That's, why, that's what David is saying here. Now, let's go, let's go here. Let's go look at uh, verse 3, 3-4, uh, three, verse 3-4. I cried to the Lord with, a, with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. I like it here in NLT. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. That's on high. God is ready to do mighty, th mighty things for us, but we've got to lift our voice. I've heard, I've said it many, many times to people. I, I got it from the fellow I'm named after, Kenneth Hagin. I got it from him. I've heard him many, many times. He'd tell people, you know, to pray about something, and they, they'd start, oh, Lord, blah, blah, blah. He'd say, open your mouth. I've seen him do it. Open your mouth and say it loud enough that they can hear you in the back of the church. 
Oh, I don't want nobody else to know about it. He said, you need to let somebody know about it. You need to let the devil know that you got the victory no matter what's happening. So many times people want to be quiet. They want to pray and whisper. Lift your voice. You know, I've been, I've been preaching for 62 years, and I can get really loud, and I'm not even straining yet. I can get even louder than that, and I'm not straining yet. I can get louder than that, and I'm not even straining yet. With a loud voice, lift your praise to God. Let everybody know he's your God. And then he's going to deliver you. It doesn't matter what it looks like, sounds like, smells like, or anything else. God is lifting my head and holding me high. I can't go under for going over. <laughs> See, God wants us to trust him to be our shield and trust him to hold us up. He wants us to call on him for help. It says here, I cried to the Lord and he answered me from the holy hill, holy mountain. Hey, we got to lift our voice and ask. You know, the word of God says, you don't have because you don't ask. You have to ask. Ask God. Oh, well, God knows what I need. If he wants to, he'll give it. No, you got to ask him. When you ask him, it releases the power. So many people say, well, if he wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. He already gave it to you in the Word. All you got to do is possess it. How do you possess it? By opening your mouth and talking. If you say to the mountain, be removed, be the cast in the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says, he'll have whatever he says. Come on now. He, see, God wants us to, to use the name the name that's above every name. He said he'd given Jesus a name that was above every name. He wants us to use that name, the name of Jesus. It's important to learn to use the name of Jesus. It's important. I end all of my prayers in the name of Jesus most of the time. Why? Because the power, the, everything that we have is because of what Jesus done at Calvary. It all rests back to him. I know if you would listen to what I had to say about don't give up on the promises of God and will follow the things that I said there, you'll find out that God will deliver you. He'll bring you through and yes. you'll have victory on the other side. You know, honey, um, you know, songs come to me. Yeah. And I, the song that just came to me, I learned as a child, every promise in the book is mine. Yeah. Every chapter, every, every verse, verse, every, every line. line. All the blessings and, of and his love divine, divine. Every the promise, promise in, in the, the book, book is, is mine. mine. Yeah. So know that Every promise in the book of God is yours in the Bible. Well, honey, we have a wonderful offer. This yes, we is, do. Uh, I believe the last time for this offer. Yeah. Um, my DVD, Facing Your Goliath. Right. And it will help you to know your promises and how to speak to the enemy. Right. Uh, your three CDs on avoiding the trap of offense. Yes. It's important to do that. And I love this book by you and your dad. It's a collection of sermons about ministering to your family. Yeah, they've, ta they've taken our sermons where we've been teaching on the family and put it together uh, yes. with his his and mine and come up with It's a good book. Yeah. You know, I uh, because there's just so many tips in this book that's going to help you. I remember, and I think it's in this book, I remember one time that uh, there was a family and their son actually uh, he was missing. They, they, right. you know, didn't know where he was, and um, and so I remember your dad saying to them, saying to him, just surround him with faith and love. Yep. Just surround him with faith and love. And you know what? The end of that story is now. He's ministering the gospel yeah. of the Lord all that's over the world. That's one of the surrounding that's, your teenager with yes, faith and love. Yes. That's one of the so that's one for, of the chapters. Uh, a gift of thirty-five dollars or more. So you can go to rhema.org for the product offer. Hey, on April the 8th through the 10th. Yes. Friday through Sunday, we got 
right here on the Rama USA campus. And, and some say, well, why don't you say the Rama USA campus? Because we got 280 of them so around the world. That's right. But uh, uh, this is the only US campus right mm -hmm. here. And uh, it includes a tour of the campus, a night of worship. You get to, you get to attend three Class. classes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a luncheon. There's information about job and housing, housing. info. And then, yes. of course, the Sunday morning service at Rainbow Bible Church. Yes. Just go to rbtc.org and all the details are there. That's right. Well, coming up next week, April 3rd through the 5th, we're going to be in Graham, North Carolina, Trailhead Church right. with Pastor Josh and Anna Grissom. And so you can go to rhema.org for all the details. And uh, just go, if you want to find out anything about our, our Living Faith Crusades or anything about Rhema, That's just right. go to rhema.org. Everything's there. You can see where we live stream. Th you can watch on demand. Yes. Uh, you, you can read our Word of Faith magazine That's online right. or you can download it. And you can uh, you can watch sermons on YouTube. Yeah. A lot of uh, sermons that have been done over the years on right. YouTube. Yes. Well, as we get out here today, we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Join Pastor Kenneth and Lynette Hagan for Living Faith Crusades in the month of April. They'll be speaking in Graham, North Carolina at Trailhead Church with Pastors Josh and Anna Gresham, happening April 3rd through the 5th. Then April 6th through the 8th, the Hagans will be visiting Victory Worship Center with Pastors Ray and Liz Eppard in Stanton, Virginia. So if you're in the North Carolina and Virginia area, we encourage you to come out and participate in the Living Faith Crusades in the month of April. For more information, you can go to rhema.org slash LFC. We look forward to seeing you there. When you have the fruit of the Spirit working in your life, you are empowered. You have a defense against Satan's offense. People take themselves out of blessing and they start blaming everybody else and it was nobody but their own self because they got offended because somebody said something about it. Avoiding the Trap of Offense. Three anointed CDs by Kenneth W. Hagan. Ministering to Your Family. A book with timely sermons by Kenneth E. Hagan and Kenneth W. Hagan. Facing Your Goliath, a powerful DVD by Lynette Hagen that will help you bring down the giants in your life with faith in God. All of these faith tools can be yours today for a gift of only $35 or more by calling toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.